time a dish with D. That's me. Thank you for clicking on this video, making yourself a priority. I am Denise. I lost 116 pounds on the Weight Watchers Freestyle Blue Plan, and now I am currently sporting the My WW Personal Points Plan. I don't know if that's what it's called. I, the Personal Points Plan. Here on this channel, we do light, healthy recipes, healthy lifestyle tips, friendship, and lots of other fun stuff. So if you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. And if you just stopped here and not sure what you're seeing, consider subscribing to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything, it's the click of a button. And I would encourage you to hit the notification bell, let you know when I upload and I go live. I go live here five days a week with um, healthy lifestyle chats around seven Eastern time here on the channel, Sunday through Thursday. You're welcome to come along. But today it is meal prep day. And meal prep day on this channel means a few recipes that I feel like making. They're not your typical meal prep, but it's fun stuff that I wanted to do and I kind of film it all in one video. So we have a spinach dip. We have the Weight Watchers. It was on the recipe card last week's meeting. It was a, um, a potato egg bake. We have Hungry Girls, Lemon Poppy Seed, Oat Bars, and we have, there was, oh, I threw a little um, cream of wheat loaf because I was making it anyway. So, fun, easy recipes, low in points, but delicious and high in flavor. The riff on the Weight Watcher recipe is I just made a single portion. Theirs was a sheet pan bake. I ain't making no sheet pan bake, people. <laughs> I don't really, um, I mean, if everybody was going to eat it, but actually they made something else so I just made because a lot of people ask me for I'm alone this is me and my husband so that's what I try to do here I try to adjust recipes for one to two people you absolutely can make it um, I show the card there's a QR code um, for this minimal ingredients um, so let's get started I don't know I'm sure what I'm starting with because I filmed this all during the week so thank you for watching and let's get into some prep so I have this fun seasoning I got at the Christmas tree shop it's called spinach seasoning. It was on clearance. It's outdated by a month, but for 64 cents, I was all in for it. So I thought we'd make a fun dip. So in my bowl, I have about a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. Again, if you want to put mayo in, you probably could, but I'm just going to mix. I'm not sure how much I need, because I went on their website, didn't have any recipes. Said it did, but not for anything I was looking for. So we're going to do Try two tablespoons. A lot of green in here, a lot of dried spinach. Okay. And we're just gonna, there's my faye. It's empty. I love faye. To me, it's the best. I don't know where I've been my whole journey that I've just discovered faye. Just gonna, I think this is plenty. I'm just gonna mix it up and then we're gonna let it sit in the fridge and let those dried herbs soften in the yogurt. And that to me is a zero point dip. There's nothing in this dip. Let me show you um, the ingredient list. If I could find it. Here it is. That is it. There is no ingredients in there that we have to count. It's all dried onions, garlic, dill weed, spinach, salt, crushed red pepper flake. And we have our beautiful non fact. Look at that. I mean, this looks delicious. You dip vegetables in here you can dip fruit in here see this is how i get these veggies in because i don't and i like like i said in the video of fiber you have to eat them raw to get really the best benefit of them and this is to me how i do it so this is an easy quick dip all right dip sat overnight let's see how it tastes i'm gonna use a pretzel because it's quick oh it's nice and thick Mmm. Make a nice dip. I think it needs a little bit of salt though. Other than that, it's a win like taste of spinach. It does need a little bit of we'll put some Trader Joe's onion salt in there. And be perfect. Alright. Fourth of July. It's not Fourth of July without a tomato salad, pico de gallo, salsa, whatever you want to call it. Got some fresh Jersey Roma tomatoes. So I'm just gonna cut up a few and make some salad. I like to dice mine small. Back in the day, I used to take all this out, but I've learned to live with it because back in the day, I didn't like tomatoes. So I would take all the guts out. 
But now what I do is I take, chop the tomatoes, leave it in a colander, let the colander sit with a little bit of salt, and a lot of that water comes out so you're only left with meat, the meat of the tomatoes. So we're gonna just slice up a few, a little bit of onion, a little olive oil, salt and pepper, a little bit of basil, onion seasoning, whatever you prefer. Make it in and you make your favorite tomato salad. So our, our tomato is diced. I'm only going to make enough for tonight's dinner. I'm going to make a fresh batch every day this weekend because I just like it fresh, honestly. You can make a big batch and reuse it. But we're going to try something new in this today. I purchased this at Sam's. And it's called Easy Onion. Few people in this house don't like to bite into raw onion. So I'm hoping that this will alleviate their distaste for onion. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in here. A little bit of chopped garlic. Again, that is something you don't need to put in, but I like it. Not a lot because garlic will take over. And I also got this at Sam's Club as well. It was a big, big good run for me this week. It's called The Blend from Kinder's. It is salt, pepper, and garlic. Kind of like Paula Deen's house seasoning. I'm going to sprinkle that there. And I will put a little extra black pepper because I like black pepper. Never, in my opinion, cannot ever, ever have too much black pepper in tomato salad. So we're gonna let this sit there and marry up a bit. Throw some green parsley in there. Cause you know, there's nothing green in there, it's all red. But there's your quick, delicious and easy tomato salad. Salsa. If you wanted like a salsa pico, you could put jalapenos in there, a little bit of cilantro, but I'm just going for a little bit of a tomato vibe, but you know, I just, tomatoes are always the same. I just kind of change up my seasonings, but we're going for a little bit of a tomato vibe. I may throw a little spritz of vinegar in here, a little balsamic, just to give it a little round or maybe some uh, red wine vinegar. Some splash. Uh, oh, we do need our olive oil. Let me grab that. Yeah. Spritz of olive oil, got my olive oil spritzer. That's so nice, you can control. And we will put a little balsamic. You don't want that one, I have several different flavors. I don't want that one either. I don't have the one I want. So we're gonna leave it out because I have flavored ones and they're not gonna go in this. So we'll just leave the balsamic out for right now. But it will be ready to go in a few minutes. Let it marry together. All right, let's make Hungry Girl's Lemon Poppy Seed Oat Bake. In my large bowl, I have three cups of old fashioned oats. Now she doesn't say whether you could use regular, I mean, quick oats, but I have them, so I'll use them. I mean, I think you probably could, but I will have her recipe. Um, I guess I'll have to put it in my, um, my website because you won't be able to get this recipe on her site. Just thought about that, it's from her magazine. Not sure if I can do that. I might have to put it in mine. All right, so we have our oats in a large bowl. To that, I'm going to add half a cup of no calorie sweetener. I have um, Lakanto monk fruit, one and a half tablespoons of chia seeds, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Dump. All right. Get those evenly distributed. Okay. To that, I'm going to add half a cup of unsweetened applesauce. I just use one of those cups, honestly. I wasn't really going to worry about it. If I'm a little bit shy, a little bit over, it's really not going to make a difference. We have our unsweetened almond milk and our vanilla extract. One and a quarter cups of milk and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Four beaten eggs. You can scrape those out. Every bit of those eggs. Let's get this mixed up a bit. 
Now, of course, your oven is preheating to 350, and you spray an 8x8 eight eight baking pan with non-stick spray. Uh, We're also going to add our lemon juice and lemon zest. I just zested one lemon and juiced it. And I'm going to put it through this little sieve just in case I might have gotten some seeds because you just don't know. And some pulps in there too. All right. I figured I would like this with the lemon zest and the lemon juice. Okay. And give that a whoosh. Get everything evenly distributed. You know, all the zest in one place. I love oat bars. This just sounded different. Poppy seeds, chia seeds. I was all in for that. And speaking of poppy seeds, we're going to fold in our poppy seeds. One and a half tablespoons. I got everything. Eggs, lemon juice, lemon zest, vanilla. Yep. Yeah. These get a glaze after they come out of the oven. A nice powdered sugar or powdered monk fruit in our case. And uh, lemon juice glaze. So there we have it. That seemed to come together rather quickly. Let's get our prepared pan. All right. We have our prepared pan. Ooh, that's a lot of butter for a little pan. At least I think. It'll probably be thick bars. Let me just pop her in. Look at all those poppy seeds and those chia seeds. Get them all out. Get them all to count. I like poppy seeds and chia seeds. They're a little bit of a texture element. All right, we're gonna spread her off. And we're gonna bake. It says here to bake. Thirty-five minutes to lightly golden brown. There you go. I'll show you what it looks like at the top. All right, it's ready to go in the oven. For 35 minutes. I did wind up shaking on there just because I had it. And one of these little tasty shakes, oatmeal mix-ins, I just sprinkled some on top. But I thought, I think it looks really good. I'm I'm into poppy seeds and chia seeds right now, so I'm excited for this. So we're going to bake it, and when we come back, we'll take it out of the oven. Here's the recipe. Maybe I'll just screenshot it. That's what we'll do. I'll just screenshot the recipe. This way you could um, stop the video and, um, or you're on your phone and stop and take a screenshot. That's what we'll do. All right, she baked for exactly like the thing said, 35 minutes. It is golden brown and smells delicious. Now there is a glaze, um, powdered monk fruit or powdered sugar, whichever you prefer, and a little bit of lemon juice. I'm not sure, I think I might wanna wait till this cools a bit before I put that on there. I don't. But it's a seep and I want it to sit on top. So I'm going to let it cool a little bit. And we will glaze it with a little. I'm using powdered monk fruit, but you could use powdered sugar if you choose. All right. We mix the powdered monk fruit with a little bit of lemon juice to make a little drizzle. So we're just going to drizzle it over. You can make this drizzle as thin or as thick as you like. And just drizzle it over the top. A little added sweetness. A little added decadence. Because, you know, just because you want a weight loss pen doesn't mean you don't get to have something sweet, a little bit special. Okay. There you have it. Let me show you how it looks. There you go. Oh, it smells delicious. I just licked my finger and, yeah, sweet lemon juice does smell good. I took screenshots of the recipe. This way, it's her recipe. I don't need to put it in my website but there you go should be tasted i mean do we really think we're going to go away without tasting it i don't know look how thick it is mm. 
when the lemon comes through with the little texture of the cheese seeds and the poppy seeds. I like texture, so I like that. If you don't like it, then you probably won't like this, but I do. I like it. So this is a win. Thank you, Hungry Girl. Hey, Editing D here with an idea. As I was editing this video, I thought, why not put the oatmeal mixture, there's Bailey, in a 9 by 13 pan, make them thinner like a traditional chewy granola bar. That'd work in my world. And maybe, since they're soft, maybe put them in the oven to toast like a biscotti. Just a thought. Let me know if you try that, because I think that's what I would do. I think they would make a fantastic bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would. And um, next is coming the screenshots. I did them two ways. I don't know which way you would say it. I also have the link down below for the My WW Personal Points if you have the app in the United States. Um, that's her link. She does it. It goes right into the... Now, I did notice you can't change her, her ingredients. Like some Weight Watcher recipes, you can go in and edit them. You can't edit hers. It is what it is. But um, you know what points are, so you can figure that out. But yeah, I will have the WW, um, her link for the WW app for the points. So you can find out your personal points for them. So back to the food. Here's a list of the ingredients. Stop your camera or stop your video. Here is a list of the steps. It's very easy, it's just dump and go. So this was yesterday's card, the recipe of the week. It is sheet pan, cheesy hash browns and eggs. I don't need all this. This is all makes a lot, so I thought, why not try doing it on the stove for just one portion? Because I'm not be, but I'm about a one and done kind of gal, you know. Because I don't think I would like this leftover. So I have my pan heating up. I'm going to throw in some onion and I have potatoes. So for a portion, it is 100 grams, two points, zero, uh, blah, 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 blah. potatoes are zero points for me right now. So this is a zero point amount for me, but it is one serving. So it would be two points if you have to count potatoes. So we're going to put our onion. Now you could put pepper in here as well, but I'm just going to do onion. I have my onion. It said sliced, but I like mine diced the same size of the potato. I don't know. It's aesthetically how I like things. So we're going to put our onion in and our potatoes. And we're going to get these. Cook them till they get nice and golden brown. So that should take a few minutes. If you want to put bell peppers in here, I think that would be good as well. I don't have any, but it would be delicious. So I'm going to saute this up and then let it get brown. And we're going to put, I'm going to put some Canadian bacon in there too. But I'm going to let it cook first. It's not like the Canadian bacon to be too cooked because it'll be like rubber. So I'm going to cut the Canadian bacon, let this brown up, and we'll come back. What a garlic. Never hurt anybody. I know. Did you spice chopped garlic? My garlic keeps going bad. I think it's the refrigerator. Put it in there, babe. Potatoes are almost done. They are brown. I'm going to add the Canadian bacon. One point's worth. Three slices. Because I said I don't want I just want to heat it through. I don't like my Canadian bacon cooked. Just a little bit. So uh, let's distribute it. Alright. So then it says to make a well in there for your eggs. So we did that. I'm going to spray a little bit more olive oil. So not a lot to worry about, but I cracked two eggs. <laughs> there it is. Right on top. But I'm going to cover mine because I want my eggs to cook a little bit more than normal. Let's season them with a little bit of the blend from Kinder's. That's just some salt, pepper, and garlic. And we're going to put a lid on so the eggs will steam. And then we're going to put our one point worth of cheese on top. Yes, I measured it. When the eggs are almost done, we're going to sprinkle on our cheese so that can melt as well. 
Yeah. Well, it's done. All right, there it is, all done. For me, on my personal points, it's two points, a point for the cheese and a point for the Canadian bacon. Potatoes would be two points if you have to count them. Eggs are zero for me, but if you have to count them, like, are they still two points a piece? I haven't had eggs. I haven't counted eggs in forever, so I don't even know how many points they are. But yeah, so this honestly looks delicious. Just, I kind of broke the yolks. They will cook a little bit more because I don't like them completely raw, but this is definitely an easy a hack on that recipe if you only want to make it for one you absolutely could just do one egg i did two because i'm a piggy in the morning so i can't wait to dig in for me like i said it is two point breakfast people ask me all the time about my tea and i thought i'd just share you how i do it i use my kettle i boil the water boil the water boil the water in here and this is my new ace cool kettle that i showed you guys last week it's still available with a discount if you're interested just look at last week's meal prep if you want to see it it is fantastic and i steep tea bags in my ceramic teapot this is a four cupper so i put two tea bags four cups of water i let it steep and by the time i'm ready for it it's cool and perfectly ready to go um this is i just like fresh tea i don't like to have i don't like it too old though so this usually keeps me depending sometimes one day some days two days just depends on my mood. Um, so yeah, I, I pour, pour it over ice. If I'm really, really in a rush, I have done it hot over ice to make it iced tea. Um, I don't normally have Lipton. This is my go-to iced tea. Um, hot, unless I'm sick. If I'm not sick, then sometimes I have Lipton hot. But nine times out of ten, I have my Lipton iced. I have most of my tea iced, except the dessert teas. A few of them iced I do not like. Like, who likes iced macaron? So, I had a banana get in bed, so I thought we would do, I've done this a million times, but for the new people who might not have seen it, oh, my boobs look big here, uh, I'm going to make my cream of wheat breakfast loaf. So, I have a mashed banana, to that I'm going to add an egg. You know, again, the variations of this can be anything. You could put all different spice blends together, uh, extracts, whatever, you know, you like, you could put in this bread. I'm doing just regular vanilla today nothing fancy no teaspoon do i measure my vanilla i do not but should you probably <laughs> not gonna lie you probably should because pure vanilla has alcohol in it and uh, one teaspoon is a point but anything above one teaspoon you're supposed to count imitation doesn't matter that never is pointed for some reason i guess there's no alcohol in it but you know you do you boo and that's how life works so we're gonna do a teaspoon of baking powder i put all that in all baked goods and of course salt because i don't know about you but my baked good has to taste good and we're going to do cinnamon i have been obsessed with the vietnamese cinnamon it's been it's actually really nice i'm um, not gonna lie i'm i may be hooked so i did get a big vietnamese at sam's club because this i love the spice and tea exchange but yeah it's a little bit out of my budget for a lot of things so we'll just do about a quarter teaspoon, because remember, this is for one. You don't need a whole heck of a lot of cinnamon. And I like to put a little maple syrup in it. Now, you could use pure maple, whatevs, but I just use the old two tablespoons of pancake syrup, because it's a breakfast loaf for me. So I like a little bit of pancake mix in there, just, you know. And we're gonna throw an extra tablespoon of the brown sugar substitute. I am using Truvia Sweet Complete that I get at my regular grocery store. Back on the old plan, it was zero points no matter how much you used. Now I think you get a certain amount of is points, but honestly, I don't worry about it. <laughs> but that's me. You know, I, ne I never worried before and I was fine, so I'm not, I don't sweat some of the small stuff. But if, if you need to sweat it, then that's what you do. Remember, your journey, not mine. So let's mix all that up. Now you can put a little bit of non-fat Greek yogurt in this, which would be really delightful. You grab a spatula. All right, got this all mixed together. And I keep my cream of wheat in a container because I use it all the time. Now the original recipe calls for four tablespoons, but I find three works just as well and it shaves off a point. So you do whatever recipe you like better. I don't really think it matters, but I do feel three tablespoons does the job, so why not, right? And today I'm using, I think I have a paper, new chips to me, the Chalk Zero 
dark chocolate baking chips. They, I think they're sweetened with, um, does it say? Sugar-free dark chocolate, but they're sweetened. So they have to be sweetened with something, but they definitely have a sweetness to them. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not sure, but I buy the Chalk Zero products. They're syrups. They are phenomenal. They're candy. I got all my Easter candy for myself from there. They have chocolate bunnies, little chocolate squares. Their chocolate squares are only two points. Kind of big as a Ghirardelli. So 11 of them is zero points. So we're going to put 11. All right. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and one makes 11. See, I do count some things. Have our prepared little loaf pan. Do that mix, and we just pour her in. Bad angle, Denise. I know. Remember, we are not watching the Food Network. We are watching Dish with D. Her angles suck, but she's her food's really good. Okay, get all that goodness in there. Now I'm going to top it with a little bit of this. It's called Tasty Shakes Oatmeal Mixins of Vanilla Bean. But nice. I got this at an outlet. I just really like it. So just get a little spritz on the top of Vanilla. You could use the um, Twix shaker as well, but I'm going for this. So we're going to bake the thing that bakes for 25 minutes. Everything is on my website, dishwithy.com, written recipes for everything I make. If it's, if it's my recipe, like the Hungry Girl one that I did with the oat bake, I did screenshot that. There's no sense to be putting it on my website. It's her recipe. I'm not going to put it in there. I screenshot the um, recipe. It's very easy. So I'm going to go bake this. Oven is preheated around 375 to 400. Depends on what you like to bake at. Some people's 375, some people's 400, some people's 350. Whatever you like to bake at, 375 is what I would tell you to do. So let's go bake her up. All right, she baked for 25 minutes. I'm gonna let her cool completely. We're going to unmold her. Look how good she looks. This is an amazing, healthy, whole grain breakfast and very filling. I like to slice it down this way and put some, uh, toast it and put some peanut butter <laughs> jelly. You know how I roll. All right, she's all out. She's going to cool completely before we wrap her up. This is a substantial loaf. It is absolutely delicious. So I highly recommend this loaf for breakfast. And look how easy these pans come right out. Now I get asked all the time about my pan, so I thought I would address it in the video. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I get it. I get these at the Christmas tree shop. Um, check out your local Goodwill and thrift stores for these. Cause you'll see them all the time. Yard sales, people for some reason don't like these. I am obsessed with this. I call it the D pan. This is the D loaf and the D pan because I use this constantly. So the size of it is five and a half by three and a half. So that is the pan. Now I know Temptation on QVC has them. Also, I've been told, actually I don't know, totally know um, Walmart has the Pioneer Woman. Hers are a little bit smaller, but would totally work. So if you have a Walmart, go in their section and get the cute little Pioneer Woman ones. So that would work. So that's your PSA for today. Make this loaf. Like I said, I cut it in half, toast the halves, and I put peanut butter and jelly. Or you could just put jelly. You could put um, butter. You put whatever you want on there. It's absolutely delicious. It's just, you don't have to put anything. You can eat a plain. It is that good. But I like the maple syrup, giving it that, to me that breakfast vibe. But totally, totally reinventing cream of wheat. All right. I did mention these. They are sweetened with stevia. Girl can't see. But you can only get them on their website. I do enjoy the Chalk Zero products. I like their syrups and their chips and their little chocolates. This is the one that I was telling you about. These are two points each. I get their um, advent calendar from them. I've gotten Easter bunnies from them. I enjoy their chocolate. I don't believe you can get them at the store. I think they're totally online. I got hooked up with them through a contest on Instagram that I won. So I've been hooked ever since. I do not have a code or anything. I just really like their products. So I do buy quite a few things from Chalk Zero. I think I've done a haul from them, I think. But that's what's in this loop. I'm going to use up my chips. I got a white chocolate, a milk chocolate, and dark chocolate chips from them. So you'll be seeing them in future videos. For all you Bailey lovers, here's your ba dose of Bailey. If you're new here, Bailey is my 10-year-old... Yoshan. He's a Bichon Yorkie mix. He's quite a handful. He's been through quite a lot, but you know, he's a doll baby. He's my heart. 
Say hi. Want to say hi? Say hi. Say thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Well, you heard it from Bailey. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and tuning in. If you enjoy these videos, let me know with a thumbs up. Leave a comment below on something you might want to try. Um, most of my recipes are listed on my website, dishwithd.com. I didn't put Hungry Girls in there because honestly, it's her recipe. It's not mine. Why would I put it in mine? It doesn't make sense. So I did screenshot it for you. So everything is there. If you always have a question, please let me know in the comment section below. And we will dis dish with you. Dish another day my lovelies remember you are fabulous bye bye